Hello, my name is Ryan Hope, judge of the Municipal Court of athens Clark County. Everyday Georgians seeking to find a good job, stable housing, or advance in their educational life face barriers due to an arrest that appear on their criminal history. I'm here to talk to you today about a concept called record restriction, which is a process that can help remove those barriers. So what is record restriction? Record restriction is a process that was formerly known as expungement. Expungement is a term that means to erase or to clear completely. That wasn't necessarily an accurate representation of what happened when an arrest was expunged. Record restriction is now the current terminology and is more accurate. And the process of record restriction came about as part of the criminal justice reforms that were enacted by Governor Nathan Deal. The enactment was in July 1st of 2013. Not only did it change the terminology to be more accurate, but it also expanded the types and number of cases that were eligible for restriction so that individuals could get that second chance to become a productive citizen. Record restriction means that a criminal arrest is restricted from public view. It doesn't mean it goes away forever, and that's why the transition from expungement to restriction was made. But it does mean that employers, uh, individuals that would review housing applications and education applications, would not be able to see arrests under certain circumstances so that individuals could obtain that employment, that housing. There are limitations to record restriction, as I stated. Some public entities can still see the record, especially if you are applying for a job to work with the elderly or with children. Some of those agencies would still be able to see a record, but they would also see now that it was a record that was restricted. Law enforcement will still be able to see a restricted disposition. So a police officer, a judge, a prosecutor would still see a restricted record but they would also see a designation that that was a restricted record. So what is the best place to start if you want to find out if you're eligible for restriction? Well, the best place to start is you need a copy of your criminal history. Due to the passage of time, some individuals forget the details of their original arrest. They don't remember the arresting agency. They don't remember what they were charged with, whether it was a misdemeanor or a felony. So having a copy of your criminal history is an essential first step. How do you go about doing that? It's easier than what you would think. You just contact your local law enforcement agency, a police department in your community, the sheriff's office in your community. You don't have to know your original arresting agency to request your criminal history. You can just go to a law enforcement agency in your home community. Call them, find out what the process is. There is typically a fee associated with that process and you'd want to find that out in advance as well. Here in athens Clark County, the fee to request your criminal history is only a $20 fee. What is on your criminal history? Who maintains it? The criminal history is maintained by the Georgia Crime Information Center. So sometimes you'll hear a criminal history referred to as a GCIC. When you request a copy of your criminal history, your GCIC, you will see initially biographical information at the top of that history. So you know it's your history. You'll see your name, your date of birth and other identifying information. It's the information below that biographical information that you really wanna look at. If you don't see any information after that biographical information, if it says no record found, good news. You can stop watching this video right now. You don't need to take any additional steps. You don't have arrests that are appearing on your criminal history. There are certain things you could be arrested for in Georgia that are not fingerprintable offenses that will not appear on your criminal history. What you will see if you've been told in the past an arrest is holding you back from a job or from housing are what we call cycles. And cycles delineate or outline each individual arrest on your criminal history. So let's say you've been arrested five times in your lifetime. You might have five cycles. Under cycle one, you will see a variety of information. You will see once again your name, what agency arrested you. You might see a case number the charge you were arrested for, and the severity of that offense. Was it a misdemeanor or a felony? You will then see after that arresting information, a series of entries by the courts or by the prosecutor about the progress of your case as it goes through the criminal justice system. 
Eventually, what you really want to look for to find out if you're eligible for restriction is what was the disposition of each individual cycle. Were you convicted? Were the charges dismissed? That disposition information is going to be the controlling information in whether or not that arrest is eligible for restriction. You may also find out that your charge is already restricted because there are some automatic restrictions that have occurred and you weren't even aware of it. So that disposition information is very important. Now, if you see an entry of nolo contendere or plea of guilty, that typically means you were convicted of that offense and it might mean you're not eligible for restriction, but we're gonna talk about situations where even convictions are eligible for restriction. If you see a disposition along the lines of dismissal, null pros, which is a Latin term, uh, no bill, or that you received a conditional discharge or first offender treatment, those are the types of dispositions that would be considered non-convictions and would likely be eligible for restriction. It's important to know that the version of the criminal history that you run will show everything, even if it has been restricted previously. So you'll get a complete picture of what's on your criminal history. If an employer or some non-law enforcement agency requests permission to run your criminal history, they will run, or run it under a different code that will exclude restricted arrests. And that's the goal you're trying to get at, is having a history that an employer might not see the arrest. Now, as you re review your criminal history, you may determine that you're not interested in a restriction so much as just a correction of your history. You know that you weren't the person arrested at all and there's something showing up on your history. You know that you weren't arrested for what the history says you were arrested for. The history indicates this is a felony arrest and you know you were arrested for a misdemeanor or the court disposition is incorrect. You think the charges were dismissed, the court disposition says it's a conviction. If what you're seeking is a correction, then you need to have supporting documentation to back up the request to correct the criminal history. And then you need to give that supporting documentation to whatever entity entered that part of your criminal history. So let's say it's the arresting agency that misreported the severity of the charge, that it should be a misdemeanor, not a felony. You would wanna reach out to the law enforcement agency that made the arrest. Get a copy of your police report, get a copy of the arrest warrants or the booking report in your case. If they indicate that what's on your criminal history isn't accurate, then you would send those documents along with a letter to request that that law enforcement agency correct the information that's on your criminal history. If it were a court disposition that indicates you were convicted when you feel you were not convicted, then you would want to contact the clerk of court for that particular court, get a copy of your disposition, if you compare that to your criminal history and the court disposition is different than what's on your criminal history, once again, write a letter back to that clerk of court, include the supporting documentation, and request that they update the criminal history to be correct and accurate. But if you see things that are on the criminal history, they are accurate, and what you're worried about is that they are appearing on job background checks, um, employment background checks, uh, housing background checks, then restriction is what you're trying to find out. Am I eligible to have that offense restricted? There are some offenses after the change in the law of July 1st of 2013 that should at this point be automatically restricted. So if your case was dismissed, if the grand jury elected not to indict your case after you were arrested, if you received a first offender discharge or a conditional discharge, those are all examples of non-convictions that after July 1st of 2013, the arrest should have been restricted when you received that type of disposition. Another example would be if you went to trial on your charges and you were acquitted of all charges and that happened after July 1st of 2013, that arrest, then that's eligible for restriction. There are certain time expired restrictions that will happen automatically. So if you were charged with a felony, and for some reason the case never was pursued, it's two years later, automatically the Georgia Crime Information Center restricts a misdemeanor for which they received no disposition after two years. For felonies, depending on the severity of the felony charge, four years or seven years after the arrest, if Georgia Crime Information Center never receives a disposition of how that charge uh, turned out, 
then you would receive a time expired restriction and that would be a restricted arrest. If your case was dead docketed, that is the parties mutually agreed to place the case on a special docket and not pursue the case at the 12 month mark of the case being dead docketed, that case would automatically be restricted. Now, if you have a charge that occurred prior to July 1st of 2013, you likely will not have received some of these automatic restrictions and you might have to go through the old application process if you're still seeing an arrest on your history and you think it should be eligible for restriction. So that would involve contacting the original law enforcement agency. There is a link available on the GBI website where you can download your restriction application. It's a generic application, so you can submit it to any local law enforcement agency. You won't have the difficulty of determining who that agency is because you've already requested your criminal history you have it in front of you, so you'll know which law enforcement agency to turn that application into. You will want to contact that agency in advance to find out if they still charge any fees with this process. There are certain convictions that can now be restricted. This was not the case prior to the change in the law of July 1st of 2013 and prior to a new change in the law that went to effect January 1st of 2021. If you have a conviction on your history, one thing you can ask to do is you can request that the original sentencing court retroactively give you first offender status if you did not use it at the time of your sentencing. It might be that you weren't aware that that was something you were eligible for. You represented yourself or your attorney didn't make you aware of that fact. You can retroactively under certain circumstances request first offender treatment. This is a process that oftentimes requires the consent of the parties involved, the prosecutor and the court, and is a little more involved than what some people might be able to handle on their own. So at the end of the video, there are some resources that we're gonna steer you to that could assist you with requesting a retroactive first offender. There is also a new law that as of January 1st of 2021, even if you're not eligible to utilize a retroactive first offender, you can request to have up to two misdemeanor arrests restricted on your criminal history. There are conditions. Convictions that are at least four years old are eligible. They have to be misdemeanor convictions, but there are certain restrictions even amongst the misdemeanor convictions or exceptions amongst the misdemeanor convictions. Misdemeanor convictions that cannot be restricted under this new process include family violence arrests, unless you were under the age of 21 at the time of that arrest. Sexual offenses cannot be restricted. Most offenses related to minors. Theft offenses, although theft by shoplifting is eligible for restriction, even if you were convicted under this new law. Serious traffic offenses, including DUI, are not eligible for restriction if you were convicted of those offenses. There are also certain pardoned felonies that may be eligible under this new law. But once again, you want to seek out those resources we're gonna mention at the end of the talk because those are uh, involved processes. So hopefully that's given you some guidelines, an outline of what record restriction is, what its benefits are, what its limitations are. There are resources we want you to reach out to. This is just intended to be a primer, to give you a head start especially having that criminal history in hand is very helpful, not only if you're gonna pursue this on your own, but if you're gonna reach out to the resources. One of those resources is the Georgia Justice Project. They have a great website that outlines many of these same issues I'm discussing, a lot of the different scenarios we discussed. So they are a great entity to reach out to, and they also have attorneys who on a volunteer basis will assist people with restriction issues the Public Interest Practicum, which is a clinic at the University of Georgia School of Law, is a resource here in athens Clark County that is willing to help out individuals who have questions about restriction. Also, the Georgia Clients Council is a citizen advocacy group that wants to assist individuals that are trying to improve their lives, seek better jobs, stable housing, and on a citizen basis, even though they are not attorneys, they want to help out individuals with restriction issues the Georgia Clients Council, the University of Georgia School of Law, and C.R. Chisholm, who's our local elected Solicitor General, periodically put on restriction events here in athens Clark County. So if you see one of those advertised either here or in your home community, 
those are certainly events you want to pay attention to, register to, attend, because oftentimes they have free legal counsel available at those events that will be able to give you advice about the best steps to take to restrict your arrest.